Okay, so let's just start with something that many of you have seen already. If not, no worries. If we have something like ax equals b, uh, this is a linear equation. Um, one reason that uh, linear is used, the term linear, is because this is the equation of a straight line. However, as it turns out, although we use the term linear, uh, because it comes from the straight line, uh, later on in the course we're actually going to give a precise definition of what we mean by linear. And believe it or not, it actually has nothing to do with a straight line. It just so happens that the equation, this ax equals b, which can be represented by a straight line on a sheet of paper on a two-dimensional uh, surface. It had, happens to be a straight line, so we call it linear. But, it's, but the idea of linearity is actually a deeper algebraic property about how this function actually behaves when we start moving from space to space. OK, so this is sort of a single variable. We have ax equals b, uh, something like, for example, I don't know. Well, that's OK. We'll just leave it like that. Um, if I can write this, a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 equals b. Well, these a's are just different coefficients, 5, 4, 6, negative 7. These x1, x2, and x3 are the variables. So now instead of just the one variable, you know, some equation up here. We have three variables, x1, x2, x3. We can have any number of them, and b. So a solution to something like this is a series of x's that satisfy this particular equation. That's all that's going on here. A linear equation, what you know of as linear essentially is when this exponent up here is a1. That pretty much is uh, what we're used to seeing when we deal with linear equations. But again, linearity is a deeper algebraic property which we'll explore a little bit later in the class. And that's when linear algebra becomes very, very exciting. Okay, so let's use a specific example. So if I had something like 6x1 minus 3x2 plus 4x3 equals minus 13, I might have something like x1 equals 2, x2 equals 3, and x3 equals minus 4. Well, this 2, this 3, this minus 4 for x1, x2, and x3 is a solution to this linear equation. That's it. We're just looking, that's, that's all we're looking for. We're looking for variables that satisfy this equality. That's all that's happening here. <clears throat> Note, however, that we can also have x1 equals 3, x2 equals 1, and x3 equals minus 7. So if we put 3, 1, minus 7 in for x1, x2, and x3, respectively, we also get this equality, minus 13. So as it turns out, these particular variables don't necessarily have to be unique. Uh, several, sometimes they can be unique. Other times, uh, a whole bunch of set of numbers can actually satisfy that equality. So we want to find as many of the solutions that satisfy that equality. Okay, now let's generalize it some more and talk about a system of equations. So I'm going to go ahead and represent this symbolically. So let's see, we have a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus dot 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 plus a1n x sub n equals b sub 1. So this just says our first equation. We have n variables. That's with the x1 to xn. And these are just the coefficients in front of those variables x's. And this is just some number. So this is one linear equation. And now we'll write another one. a21 x1. And I'll explain what these subscripts mean in just a moment. Plus a22 x2 plus dot 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 plus a2 n x sub n equals b2. Now we have our second equation. And then we go down the line. So I'm going to put a dot 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 there, dot dot dot. That means we're dealing with several equations here. And then I'm going to write 
a m 1 x 1 plus a m 2 x 2 plus dot 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 plus a m n I know that's a little small but that's an m n right there equals b sub m. So notice we use two subscripts here. Like for example, we usually call the subscripts ij. And the first subscript represents the row or the equation. So in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to the mth equation. So a11 is the first equation. And the second entry, j, represents that particular column. Uh, th that particular entry. So a11 represents the first coefficient in the first equation. If I did something like, let's say I had a32, that would mean the third equation, the second entry, the second coefficient, the, the coefficient for x2. And that's all this means. So here I have, notice, x all the way to n, xn, xn, all the way down. Oops, I forgot an xn right here. So I have n variables. And I have as many rows, m equations. And this is exactly what we say. When we have m equations in n variables, this, this many, and this many, we just arrange it like this. So this is a system of linear equations. What this means when we're looking for a solution to a system of linear equations as opposed to just one linear equation, we're looking for, we want a set of x1, x2, all the way to xn, such that all of these equations are satisfied simultaneously. such that all equalities, I'll, I'll say equalities instead of equations. We know we're dealing with equations. We want all of these equalities to be satisfied simultaneously. In other words, we want numbers such that that holds, that holds, that holds, that holds. If one of them doesn't hold, it's not a solution. Let's say you have seven equations, and let's say you found some numbers that satisfy six of them, but they don't satisfy the seventh. That solution doesn't have a, that system doesn't have that solution. It has to satisfy all of them. That's the whole idea. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Um, we're going to use a process called elimination. to solve systems of linear equations. So now we're going to start in with the examples to see what kind of situations we can actually come up with. Um, one solution, infinitely many solutions, no solutions. What are the things that could happen when dealing with a linear system? Um, how many variables, how many equations, and what's the relationship that exists? Just to get a sense of what's going on, just to get us back into the habit of working with these. Now, of course, many of you have dealt with these in algebra. You've seen the method of elimination. You've used the method of substitution. Essentially, elimination is turning one equation, let's say you have two equations and two unknowns, you're going to manipulate one of the equations so that you can eliminate one of the variables because, again, in algebra, ultimately, when you're solving an equation, you can deal with one variable at a time. So let's just jump in, and I think the, uh, the technique itself will be self-explanatory. Okay. So our first example is x plus 2y equals 8, 3x minus 4y equals 4. We want to find x and y such that both of these hold simultaneously. Okay, so in this particular case, elimination, um, and it really doesn't matter which variable you eliminate. Uh, so a lot of times, <clears throat> it's a question of personal choice. Some people just like one particular variable. Oftentimes, you'll look at what's, you know, what looks like it's easy to do. That'll guide your choice. In this particular case, I notice that this coefficient is 1. So chances are, if I multiply this by 3, uh, negative 3, this whole equation by negative 3 to transform it, and then add it to this equation, 
the negative 3x and the 3x will disappear. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by negative 3. And when I do that, I tend to put a negative 3 here, negative 3 there to remind me. So what this ends up being is minus 3x minus 6y equals negative 24. And of course, this equation, we just leave it alone. We don't need to make any changes to it. 3x minus 4y equals 4. And now we can go ahead and add them. The minus 3x plus 3x, that goes away. Minus 6y minus 4y gives us minus 10y. Minus 24 plus 4 is minus 20. And when we divide through by minus 10, we get y equals 2. So we're able to find our first variable, y equals 2. Now I can put this y equals 2 back into any one of the original equations. You could put them in these two. It's not a problem. Uh, it doesn't, multiplying by a constant doesn't change the nature of the equation. Because again, you're multiplying, you're, you're retaining the equality. You're doing the same thing to both sides. So y equals 2. Let's go ahead and use the first equation. Therefore, I'll go ahead and draw a little line here. We'll say x plus 2 times 2, which is y, equals 8. x plus 4 equals 8. X, oops. Let's put the x on the left-hand side. x equals 4. So there you have it. A solution, x equals 4, y equals 2. If x equals 4, if y equals 2, that will solve both of these simultaneously. Both of these equalities will be satisfied. So in this particular case, we have one solution. Let me do this in red. So, one solution. Okay.